Okay, so hi class, welcome to the online session for kidney two slides. We are going to tackle seven slides for this session. We have slide one five seven that's benign nephrosclerosis, followed by one five eight that's malignant nephrosclerosis. We have slide eighty six that's Kimmel that's Kimmel Steele Wilson disease. Slide one five nine renal cell carcinoma. 168 neuroblastoma, 49 bladder transitional cell carcinoma, and 160 that swims tumor. So we are going to start with 157 that's benign nephrosclerosis. So we are going in benign nephrosclerosis. We are going to look at the uh, at the vessels because this is a vascular lesion. So we are going to look for the arterioles, which are these vessels. They are noted to have a thickening of their tunica intima, a tunica media, okay? as well as this one. Okay? So medial hypertrophy, this is what we call as the hyaline arteriolosclerosis. So, of course, if we have the obliteration or diminution of the lumen, vascular lumen, we are going to talk about the onset of hypertension in this case. So, these patients would also have a decrease in the blood supply, leading to focal parenchymal ischemia. So, what are we going to see? The presence of glomerular lesion as well as the presence of tubular interstitial injury. So, the presence of the glomerular lesion would be identified with sclerosis of the glomerulus. And then for the tubular interstitial lesion, we would see the presence of uh, mononuclear cell infiltrates in the interstitium as well as the presence of tubular atrophy here you would see the presence of the stasis of urine within the tubules okay, there you also have the tubular atrophy that's the reason why there's stasis instead of being cuboidal uh, these tubules would be lined by flattened cells okay so in a, in essence chronic pyelonephritis would also be accompanied by benign nephrosclerosis okay so for slide 158 this is called malignant nephrosclerosis so this uh, this particular case is also associated with hypertension but it becomes accelerated okay so when you say accelerated it means that there would be a rapid increase in its blood pressure okay so um, we would expect to see uh, a change in the appearance of the arterioles. So, um, the accelerated hypertension would mean that there's a blood pressure of more than 200, there's a systolic and more than 120 millimeters mercury diastolic. Uh, what are the features that we have to look for? The presence of concentric layering of the fibrocollagenous to fibromuscular uh, area like this one. Okay, so you would see the presence of the onion skinning. There's also the smudgy appearance of this particular arteriole. And this is what we call as the fibrinoid necrosis. Okay, here you would also see this one. This would show the presence of the smudgy appearance. This is what we call as the fibrinoid necrosis. Okay. This one would also see this is a small arteriole showing to you the what you call as the hyperplastic arteriolo ar arteriolitis. So next we go to slide 86. So this is an interesting slide. Uh, this is called Kimmel Steele Wilson disease. And we would see this one. 
in patients with uh, diabetes mellitus. So where do we center on the lesion? So we center on the glomeruli. Okay? We're in, uh, it's also called nodular glomerulosclerosis or um, an intercapillary glomerulosclerosis because of the presence of this nodular uh, nodular aggregates uh, of hyalinosis and and sclerosis these are known to be PS positive or per, per iodic shift acid shift stain positive you would also see the presence of a cellularity okay so if you read on Robbins there's uh, what they call as the hyaline accumulation within the Bowman's capsule which they would call as the capsular drops okay and then there's also the presence of the hyaline accumulation within the capillary loops which we would call as the fibrin caps so this one would be the fibrin caps this one okay that's fibrin caps okay so next we go to renal cell carcinoma which is slide 159 Um, so let's talk about first the clinical feature of the patient. So, although this is only seen in ten percent of cases, finding a classic and that classic trial the features would be uh, a sign of malignancy. Okay, it's a probable sign of malignancy. So, what are they? The presence of costovertebral pain, the presence of a palpable abdominal mass uh, or palpable mass at the back. Uh, and the presence of hematuria. So, what are the risk factors? So, if our patients are uh, smoking tobacco or cigarette, that would be the most significant risk factor. And then we also have obesity, hypertension, and estrogen therapy. Um, and then, with regards to genetic mutation, uh, if we look into this case, which is the clear cell type, which is the most common form, uh, this would be associated with von Hippel-Lindau gene mutation. If we're talking about the papillary type, uh, this, it's associated with the MET, FH, and BHD gene mutation. Uh, so histologically, this is uh, the clear cell type. You would see the lobules of... Uh, of the cells although they do not look atypical okay they are uh, they appear to have round dark nuclei abundant clear cytoplasm so they are mimicking the adrenal cells okay however if we're going to look at the the gross appearance of this particular tumor it has a yellow gray white uh, lobulated cut surface infiltrative borders and then with areas of necrosis okay so next we go to slide 168 this is neuroblastoma okay so with regards to neuroblastoma this is uh, what we call as a small round uh, cell tumors okay one of the small round cell tumor it is seen in infants and in childhood uh, although this would not arise primarily from the kidney it would arise from the adrenal medulla in 40 percent of cases and at the paravertebral region of the abdomen in 25 percent of cases uh, this is associated with mutations towards the anaplastic lymphoma kinase or alk the other gene that's associated would be with it would be the MYCN or the NMYC oncogene which would carry an unfavorable prognosis so uh, this is one of the small round cell tumors that we would encounter in our practice neuroblastoma it's also associated with the formation of so they are small round cells uh, they are associated with uh, 
ko. Homer Wright Rosettes, like, uh, you need to have some form of imagination if you want to look at uh, those rosettes in this case. Okay? Some are appearing to be forming those rosette patterns. If you want to differentiate this one from lymphoma, then you need a neuron-specific enolase or NSE. With regards to DNA ploidy, if it carries a hyperploid, a uh, hyperdiploid type, it will have a favorable prognosis. But if it carries a near diploid type, it is an unfavorable diagnosis. Okay. So next we have slide forty-nine, which is a transitional carcinoma. Transitional carcinoma has been changed to uh, a term called urothelial carcinoma, and this one is a papillary type, okay, wherein you would see the presence of papillary formations, like this one, okay, so you would see the presence of papillary formations of transitional cells. Uh, the low grade and the high grade, the grading system for, for the new terminology would depend on uh, the presence of Premorphism, cellularity, presence of mitosis, necrosis, and loss of polarity. So, if we're going to look at this one, it has a mild pleomorphism. They have similar sizes. This is a mitotic figure. Okay. Let's try to look for another one. There are a lot of mitosis uh, in this particular case. Um, so let's try to look at other areas. Okay, this one. This is another mitotic figure. Uh, okay, so the uh, there is no loss of polarity as you can see. Uh, it's similar to the normal pattern, architectural pattern of the of the transitional cell, okay, or transitional epithelium. Uh, with regards to risk factors for our patients, um, still number one would be cigarette smoking. Others would be aryl amine, ary, uh, aryl amine uh, exposure. We have the schistosoma hematobium. Exposure, cyclophosphamide, and irradiation, and analgesic use for long term. With regards to mutation, HRAS is fairly common in bladder cancer, as well as the chromosome 9p deletion. In high-grade tumors, we expect to see um, inactivation of the retinoblastoma and TP53. Uh, with regards to histologic prognost prognostication, uh, we try to look for muscle invasion. So this one would be the uh, this one would be the tip for the for the urothelial carcinoma. You always look for the presence of the muscularis. So invasion into the muscularis layer would carry a thirty percent. Uh, increase in mortality rate for the five years for the five year survival period okay but absence of uh, my to uh, of muscular invasion would give a favorable for prognosis for our patients and then last slide would be slide 160 which is the Wilms tumor uh, Wilms tumor is the most common primary malignant tumor of the kidney in children and in infants so genetic mutation of course it's associated with the wt1 gene as well as the beta catenin uh, it's also associated with three syndromes we have the wagr which is uh, the short term for wilms tumor aniridia uh, genital anomalies and mental retardation
which is associated with PAC6 and WT1 gene mutation. Another is the Dennis Drush syndrome, which should show the presence of pseudohermaphroditism and renal failure. And then the last would be the uh, beck Wideman syndrome, which is associated with organomegaly. So histologically, the Wilms tumor would show a triphasic pattern. So when you say triphasic, we would see different components like blastemal, uh, epithelial, and stroma, which we would uh, study in detail. So what would be the blast? Uh, what would be the epithelial component? Notice this uh, this tubular patterns. Okay, so like they are forming tubules or glands. That is the epithelial component. Okay, so you can see them. That would be forming tubular pattern. Uh, what about the blastemal component? So if you see the presence of this thick aggregates or like nests of, of those cells, those primitive round cells, then that is the blastemal component. What about the stromal component? So when you talk about the stromal, you look at cells that appear to be separated by fibrohyalinized stroma. So this is the stromal component. Okay, so those are the seven slides that we are, uh, we, we are going to discuss in this session. So kindly stay safe, always wear a mask. Okay, so don't worry, this will all come to pass. Okay, so thank you, stay safe, and good night.